Well, hello there, all you fine feathered fictionites, and welcome back to another fun Friday installment of Disinformed After Dark. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> you started with a pitch I, I wanted to follow. I don't know. That's really rude of you. That's my normal voice. <laughs> <laughs> That was an accent. Ooh, this, sounds, yeah, this uh, right here. This is an accent. This is me keeping it together. But this is my normal talking voice. Sounds a bit pitchy <laughs> to me, dog. <laughs> Didn't like it. <laughs> Didn't work for me, dog. You are like cinnamon. Yeah. Um. So this is a, a show where we usually <laughs> attempt to decompress from our fun little podcast, the Disinformed Podcast, which I will note flees from your preferred provider app every marvelous Monday morning. And this week, we delved into a little bit of uh, Twinnings madness, if you will. We had tea time for two or twelve or eugenic folks, anyway. <laughs> Courtney, you had fun? Oh, yeah. The most. I couldn't tell if that was, topic was too upsetting or the right amount of upsetting. I think it was the right amount of upsetting. It was one of those My shocking book. website or websites. It's one of those shocking topics where it's like you don't really know how to approach it, aside from me just nervously laughing the whole time. <laughs> well, I'm Michael. Um, I think I, I've... I did actually check. I do have sleepy time tea in the in the house. As do I. <laughs> I have a uh, Yogi throat comfort and uh, Earl Grey. That's about it. Good try. Oh. Also, if you haven't tried the Yogi Throat Comfort, I, I swear by it. And I think I got Shane to, to also enjoy it too, right? Or did you already know Shane? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just the white bread uh, piece of, of it here today. So. No, that was going to take a non YouTube friendly term. I could feel that. <laughs> yeah, if you want a nice non YouTube friendly component, the A side of the episode, um, we talked a lot about how to be. Um, present in the bedroom <laughs> it's important for a little bit of a dongle vascularity as it were but yes I, I have been using the the throat coat tea it is is quite wonderful and i feel hugged from the inside oh <laughs> i'm wondering oh. how long it'll take you uh before you all catch on that i have a new theme that i've started amongst my episodes cults food I would oh. hope that you would bring foodie stuff. I did honey and then I did tea. <gasps> now next will be crumpets and ice. <laughs> Speaking of which, I had crumpets for the first time this week, and I will never eat an English muffin again. What is a crumpet? It's an English muffin. Oh. But it's the British English muffin, which okay. means it's far more crusty on the bottom has a nice crunchier texture after heating and is not so cakey and dry on the inside. It's actually moist and springy and delectable. Oh. And okay. oh, it just butter soaks into it like seed into a womb. And it's just <laughs> mm, pregnant with delightful taste from that moment on. And I cannot recommend it highly enough. Well, since we are on the topic of food, uh, Becky and I went out on a like little like early week date night, and we went to Pizza Bianco in uh, in Phoenix. I knew you wrote that article. Yes, I did. Um... <laughs> oh, I get it now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Call back. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you guys ever been to uh, that pizza pizza place, Pizza Bianco? No, I, I like nope. good pizza. It is amazing pizza. You would love it. Their margarita is outstanding. No, I like um, good pizza. Yeah, so we'll we'll go on a date there, and I'll, I'll take some pills beforehand, and you can take some after, and we'll see where we line up. Anyway, so we had a nice dinner, and then we got back out to my car, and I saw that my car had been flyered, and I don't remember the last time that my car had been like anyone had stuck something underneath my windshield, and I could not have it in my wildest dreams i couldn't make this up so I, I kept it um this does show by the way so the the text is it's impolite to park at a 45 degree angle in yep. a spot dicker chip 
the the headline here and by the way it's crudely copy oh it, at the very very bottom it says copy and pass around text uh the headline is jet aircraft are not alone <gasps> I'll That's just read the first paragraph because the rest of it, I thought it was going to be more entertaining and funny, but it ends up just being really, really, it's like listening to Michael. So I just, Ugh, uh, why? Let me brace. The French, the French press reported that a Siberian airport was shut down for one and a half hours while a luminescent unidentified flying object hovered above its runway. Although it's hard to imagine such an event taking place in the industrialized United States, a compelling October 2000 study by a retired aerospace scientist from NASA Ames Research Center shows that similar incidents occur in American skies. <gasps> Aviation safety in America, a previously neglected factor, presents more than 100 pilot and crew reports of encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena that appear to have compromised aviation safety. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. So it looks like Corbell might be wanting to jump on this podcast. Oh no, he's already been a featured guest previously, right? Uh, I don't want to get I don't get Michael's blood boiling. So they weren't talking about the Marfa lights on there. No, I I do think it's really funny though that this is it was a day after the episode premiered that I got some you know unidentified object. Uh, mm. par like you know pamphlets yes. so uh steven did mention in the course of when he was steven. listening to the episode thank you uh, <laughs> i know he appreciates it i only uh, do it because i know now that it bothers him <laughs> he had mentioned why you keep living because you know it bothers your parents <laughs> oh man uh, he had alluded to the he fact as we were talking last week he was in the middle of the episode and told me he experienced similar sort of lights uh, in Phoenix, actually, while he was out on a hike. Oh, it's a thing. And uh, so when he got to the end of the episode and there was the discussion about the headlights and, you know, reflection off of changes in, uh, you know, air density and, and things like that, and that it, it may just be some refracted light or reflect reflected yes. light floating about it. that uh it's uh he felt a little bit uh remiss in having brought it up because they were floating in tandem and they were pairs of lights <laughs> just bouncing around but uh well what are you gonna isn't, do isn't that in the episode that you and michael had me check out with corbell though was phoenix lights being a thing as well as marfa um and other they, they did talk about the phoenix lights but this was not something that was I, I, you know yeah that high up in the air right. but similar enough uh and anyway. speaking of food i actually did discover on my uh work desk today i have a little parting gift i was given by a collection of students that i was overseeing back when i was working at another location and apparently this has been a thing for quite some time because i had forgotten one of the students there was obsessed with pineapple pizza and i believe i told her she had no soul and so on my parting gift, they made a little photograph, which is a collection, a little collage of, of photos that they threw together to remind me of them as I went on to greener pastures. And in the upper left hand corner is a giant picture of a pineapple pizza. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just as a, a quiet reminder. And so there, a little seeding for future podcast discussion, since I am the only one here who still does not believe that that's acceptable. I really when we can all do this in the same room which logistically we'll have to figure out because the show's different than it was before um it would be really funny to all be in the same room and have you revisit pineapple pizza for the sake of the show there's there's not a chance <laughs> oh, oh, oh i got it and not to uh to volu volunteer you here but what if courtney made it like I'm still what if not that a was... chance no Courtney's amazing. I mean, I I trust Courtney implicitly, and I appreciate and adore her for the powerful woman that she is. Particularly in this month, I want to recognize. <laughs> oh, that's right. Her yep, achievements month. as a human being. But uh, yeah, no. Just because I like somebody, I'm not going to let them brick in my mouth. Not even me. No. <laughs> oh well, I just point. won't ask. Um, so. <laughs> Well, Courtney, and then I'll I'll drop it because it's a really silly hill to die on. Yeah, you're gonna like, try to drop it. Instead of pineapple like being hot. on pizza, how do you feel about pineapple being incorporated In into the pizza? Like, what yeah, if no, she no. made? What if she made like a marinara sauce that was like had like you know, 
pineapple. I've started as to an learn ingredient. after the amount of time you and I have spent together. I just don't tend to want to eat anything in your presence any longer. Because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm either photographed eating it. <laughs> or someone, you know, has attempted to slip me a Mickey or I have to go yell at a bunch you of children I, stealing food from other members of our band who have been I am, starving. I am uh, shocked. Yeah. So I, yeah, you and I refuse. I have, you and I have shared a cheese sandwich more than twice. Uh-huh. And uh, that was years ago. And I've learned since then. I've grown as a person. Wow. So I don't trust anything in and around my face when you're present. Where's the you haven't seen the show's Vikings or the show Vikings Bandit to come uh, smack that thought out of you? <laughs> I don't know. Where's the uh, the old uh, chlamydia clip monster that you used to bang to spread the disease that you gave to her? I don't. Where did they disappear to? Hmm. Well, questions. Questions. Magicians questions. don't give away their tricks. <laughs> Yeah, well, you were tricking something back then. I just uh, forgot about it for a hot minute. But once your once your next magic trick, poof, you're single. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. So, for those who are uh, used to our standard operating forays here, we occasionally don't just let one another ruin each other's lives. We occasionally let Chuck Klosterman weigh in to uh, yeah, corrupt all of our daily views, and so this week. The hypothetical, as offered by Mr. K, is the desert island. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm scared. Roro. While traveling on business, your spouse, whom you love in this scenario... Oh, well, always. there goes my question. Always. <laughs> Never mind. It's Next in, question. It's included in the parenthetical. So uh, I mean, he has to specify it because it's probably important. Yeah, yeah, that eliminates yeah. half the members of this crew, apparently. Uh, uh, is involved in a plane crash over the Pacific Ocean. It is assumed that everyone on board has died. But then the unbelievable happens. It turns out that your spouse has survived. <gasps> he, she managed to swim to a desert island where he, she lived in relative comfort with one other survivor. They miraculously located most of the aircraft supplies on the beach and the island itself was filled with ample food sources. And according to the way this is going, it's not the only thing being filled. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The two survivors return home via helicopter greeted by the public as media sensations. During a press conference, you cannot help but notice that the other survivor physically embodies the type of person to whom your mate is normally attracted. Moreover, the intensity of the event has clearly galvanized a relationship between the two crash victims. <laughs> they spend most of the interview explaining how they could not have survived without the, others, uh, the other person's presence. They explain how they passed the time by telling anecdotes from their respective lives and both admit to having virtually given up on the possibility for rescue. At the end of the press conference, the two survivors share a tearful goodbye hug. It's extremely emotional. After the press conference, you are finally reunited with your spouse. He, she embraces you warmly and kisses you deeply. How long do you wait before asking if he or she was ever unfaithful to you on the island? Do you ever ask? And if your mate's answer is yes, would that, under these very specific circumstances, be acceptable? Hmm. Um, wow, I thought I would have a joke, but I don't really have a joke. I'm trying I, to actually um... like take this seriously. Um, I feel <sighs> like... One, I would never know. Sorry, am I stomping all over you, Michael? No, I was trying to come up with the whole uh, I, I I set myself on fire joke, but I couldn't oh, right. deliver it well enough. Um, I am a jealous person, and it's taken me a long time to retrain my brain not to behave in those kind of problematic ways. So I feel like I have grown as a person. That being said, I don't think I would bring it up I don't empathetically like I don't think I could imagine what it's like to to be in that kind of a uh, you know do or die scenario so I think in that point that's like the ultimate hall pass it's like I think I think the gift is that you are alive and that you chose at the very end like the the prompt could have gone differently and it could have been like hey so like we survived together I don't really see anything with us anymore yikes sorry so like there is love if if you're coming back to me 
So I think you just did what you had to do to survive. Now, is there a, a potential situation where you might go back to your survival mate? Maybe, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I guess my answer uh, too, too late is I wouldn't ask until they were ready to talk about it. It's their trauma to process. I would just be happy that my partner was alive. And uh, in uh, avoiding a 10 minute conversation, repeating the same thing, I agree with John. That is my answer as well. Yeah. Who wow. are you? And what have you done with Michael? <laughs> this is sober Michael. We are sober casting. Wow. I feel like my opinion is not always necessarily important to convey. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to the Disinformed Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's think we're whole... going to continue to record any further content because apparently... None of us really need to offer any of our opinions on this show. Well, uh, all We're right, just all right. going to drivel on about nothing. It's the Seinfeld podcast from here on out. I mean, I'll talk about Seinfeld. But no, no, no. He makes, he makes a good point. Like, it's not my trauma. Um, and to almost try and provoke an exploration of that trauma before they're ready would just elicit bad memories. It, or, or not bad memories, but it wouldn't end well. And if they decide it's ever necessary or important enough to talk to me about it, then we'll approach it when we get to that point. But if it never occurs and it's never necessary, then that's fine. I understand survival is, is important. And especially if they came up with saying that they weren't expecting to ever be rescued, that changes a lot of perspective, right? You know what would change my answer? Like almost immediately though? is if when uh, she came up to give me a deep kiss, if she tasted like genitals. <laughs> well, they now... don't have toothpaste and a toothbrush on the desert <laughs> island, John. So you got to make do with whatever paste you got. Um, I, I like that you also nondescriptly just say genitals. And it could be <laughs> any type of genitals. <laughs> He doesn't. I'm not he doesn't trying to. Judge. I'm not trying to assume the gender of the other survivor. Yeah, and it's a fine point. It's also 21, so I don't want to know how you know the taste. So, <laughs> fair Courtney, enough. You were saying. <laughs> Does it say on there how long they were on the island together? I don't recall offhand. It didn't sound like they specified. It was one I don't day. Think they did. It was harrowing times. <laughs> but it, all I would say is that it was long, long enough for them to not expect rescue. So if it was a day mm -hmm. and they were like, well, we're not getting rescued now, um, then that's just how it goes. Yeah, I don't think it, it specifically states the amount of time that they sp actually spent on the island. So no. Okay. Which is weird. I would expect him to, you know, mention each and every single day and then rehash it and celebrate. Oh, in some true classroom and... fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have like yeah. 10 paragraphs explaining each day and how they procured food. That's and... also an interesting sub question, though, uh, which we'll pick up once we get finished with this. But how long would you wait personally? That's what I you that attempt was to my move point on with your life. So, yes, please continue. Um, well, first, before I get into that, though, um, Jonah would be dead. Um, he's not a super strong swimmer and he's never been camping. So I would have just assumed he died. There's no chance he's coming back. I would argue oh. he most certainly is a super strong swimmer because he is present on this astral plane right now. And everyone who has made it here <laughs> has Ooh. had at least one marathon <laughs> swim session in them. Boo. Boo <laughs> this man. <laughs> Anyways. But I the reason I ask was how long before I move on? Because if it's been six months to a year, you're probably not assuming that they're coming back. And so there's also that kind of like, my life has moved on at that point. I think upon him coming back, like that would be amazing. But I think my question to him would be like, have you moved on? Like, where are you at? Because if that person makes you happy and that's where you want to be and who you want to be with, like, let's have that conversation sooner rather than later because being stuck together miserable is not as good as being happy apart. Yeah, just to like arbitrarily throw it's like six months you're processing loss. And then in a yeah. year I would say you're probably like, okay, like this is this is life now. So I agree with that. Shane. Yeah, that was actually going to be my exact sort of train of thought as well. Is I my first thought would be 
do you actually want to come back here? Uh, and would you prefer to be with me? And if you've obviously found something in this person, you've shared an experience that is going to be far and beyond anything that, you know, presumably you and I have shared. And that sort of transcendent experience, granted, a lot of that shared trauma doesn't make for the best of relationships. But at the same right. time, like, you can't will somebody to get that out of their system. And furthermore, that was my first thought. I was like, what have I been doing during this entire time? Because obviously, I'm I'm going to have been traumatized as well. You go through the grief cycle, and maybe I'm a different person on the other side of that as well. And yeah, so I, I think you really have to have an honest conversation. It would not be something as petty or spiteful as, you know, how many times? <laughs> how many, Karen? It just would mostly be... How are you? How are we? What do we want to do going forward? <laughs> Tell me when. Have an adult conversation. <laughs> really? This big? <laughs> yeah, that was the spear that they had to use in order to catch fish on the island. The fish were plentiful. They grew to be that length. It was crazy. And strangely enough, uh, he actually was comatose for a good portion of our time on the island. He was just transcribing our story with a, uh, a part in of a his sand. anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> great, Through great time. Aliens. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, I think all of us actually attempted to deal with this with a degree of, of gravity and respect these days, uh, as opposed to any of our yes. other inane nonsense. Right. <sighs> but uh, I think the mandate that we do have to get to, uh, because it is specifically asked by the question, if the individual did indicate yes was the answer, would that bother you in any no. way, shape or form? No, not really. A little bit. I, I think I would, you there would be some weird feelings there of like, well, was it better? <laughs> want that more? Do you want to do it at the same time? Can I watch <laughs> from the closet? I'll pop out at the right moment. Haha, <laughs> surprise. Well, what are you doing here, stepwife? <laughs> <laughs> stepwife. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be a deal breaker, but I would definitely have some feelings about mm. it. Yeah, I think that that kind of turns into the whole. OK, so that's what you had to do for warmth, really? <laughs> but really yeah, we fit I, together like puzzle pieces. We were. We, <laughs> oh, man, dude, you just made me transcend into city of angels. Oh, no, <laughs> we were made to fit together. <laughs> How ghastly. Oh, everything's Thank to you. be broken. For what? No, we're I not going. I know who I am. I don't want the world to see me right now either. So I'm just going to that is this that, while we can. That song was on that soundtrack. I'm it not, was. Okay. It's written about the film, for heaven's sakes. I mean, which is it, the more if you go back and, and reflect on the lyrics, they don't make sense out of context. If you don't know that film and have no frame of reference for it, that song is bizarrely out of place with the actual lyrical content. Fantastic. Yeah. So hooray. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, Shane Smith's podcast, uh, Cowboy Boys. They were talking about a, a horrific challenge where they would watch all of Michael Bay's films, uh, you know, in order. And they were talking about, like, for some reason, Shane Smith Ugh. had seen Armageddon probably over a hundred times because, like, he would, he, he worked with uh, uh, special needs children and, like, he would show them that movie because they, they like liked it so he would watch it almost every day the entire time he worked for this company um but for some reason you talking about city of angels reminds me of the armageddon thread of like these movies came out around the same time and they are just a special brand of bad like they don't really age well given the context think. of your story i think that's a terribly poor choice of words but uh mm. I, the movies don't age well. Is that what you're? That, that's better. Sure, that's what I meant. Yes, to, yeah. I don't think anybody else listening is like, oh, he's insensitive. Uh, yes, that's what they sound like. <laughs> by the way, that's oh. what you sound like to me when you complain. Oh. Ah. If you Muppet think characters. John was insensitive during that comment, leave a comment down below. Yes. You won't do it. You know the balls. Yes. Oh, so we, now this is yes. Women's History Month, my friend, and here you are oh disparaging people sans testicles. You're just a walking wound waiting to happen here, sir. You don't have the ovaries. Is that better? 
You're right. I don't. It might be worse. I don't know. I'm I am flabbergasted by this 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 time in space. <laughs> All right, fella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that thing that Shane always says? I don't, I don't have a dismount, so I'll give you a, a small blow job. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's what you wanted to hear, John. But I don't that's, think what that's what I what always hear. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, cool. All right. Well, all right then. <laughs> gonna wrap this rascal good, just like John should. Uh, Thank you. It is a <laughs> fabulous Friday to all of you, and we thank you for enduring yet another installment of this fabulous little cast. And we hope that you continue to slide back here every single wonderful week at 10 a.m. Mountain Time mm-hmm. to find more of our nonsense just spewing forth from our mouths after we've pulled it out of something else. But uh, it's always a glorious time for all of you. Uh, if you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I don't know you and I can't understand or relate, but uh, <laughs> Michael has some instructions for you. You can smash that like button, mm. uh, ring the bell, uh, hit the subscribe button or, or press it or I don't I, do one of those things and leave a comment Woo-wee. and Turn like other people's comments. And yeah, yes. Ring the bell, turn on notifications, and uh, I, yeah, tell tell people, spread the word. Try to live a better life. That too, while doing I think all the you're other doing things. Doing a perfectly fine job. You're not liking, commenting, or subscribing. <laughs> you should be better. <laughs> That's how I... we all improve. Mm-hmm. Yes. We want to hear from you. We need Please. to hear from I you. I learn nothing. We've if you that. have learned nothing, please Sorry, leave a comment. Down below. If, you, if you remember, I'm supposed to reflect like I'm the audience member in this podcast sometimes. Mm. So Which is I'm why you should you. leave a comment down below. You don't want me to leave comments. <laughs> Do what you want. Uh, John, John, comment number one What dat booty do? John, comment number two Show me, show me how damn tits fart. <laughs> Thanks for writing my material. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Well, ladies and germaphobes, thank you all for being here. I believe that is going to give us a final cessation that is oh so richly deserved for this week's installment of Disinformed After Dark. I am the one they call Kenton Eldorado. I am Timothy Lone Cactus. I am Robert Greer. Peter. And I'm Jean Grey Ghost. Everyone sitting at home stewing in your own juices presently, I would like you to remember our admonition that you should always strive to live, laugh, and lie. Please click. <laughs>